sort of where we left off. Um, over the last couple weeks, we've been in Luke's Gospel. Today we move to chapter 17. Uh, we'll be re reading verses 5 through 10. Luke 17, beginning with verse 5. Listen for the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. He replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now, sit down and eat? Would he not rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this chance to gather around table, for this chance to gather in your word, and to ask you, God, speak to us today, for we long to hear you. We long to serve you. We long to grow in our faith, and we echo that sentiment of the disciples, increase our faith, O oh Lord. Thank you. Bless us as we share together in Christ's name. It's interesting if you look back a couple verses. Does anybody remember what came just before this? Last Sunday we had the parable of um, rich man and poor man Lazarus. And uh, before that um, we had that very, very difficult teaching on how we ought to live and how we ought to give. Um, does anybody remember what comes just before this? It's Jesus um, teaching the folks in the crowd. And um, he says... If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times comes back to you and says, I repent, forgive him. Wow. That's kind of like your kid breaking something and then coming back and saying, I'm sorry, and then they go back and do the same behavior and they break something again and they come back and they say I'm sorry and they go and do the same thing again and they come back and they say I'm sorry at which we would go are you really sorry or are you just saying sorry is it what kind of sorry is it is it sorry I got caught or is it true repentance Jesus says if you truly repent and true repentance means that you change your behavior true repentance isn't the kind of, I'm sorry because I got caught. Remember when um, my sister and I used to fight and my mom would make us come together and sometimes she'd make us shake hands when we were arguing and say we were sorry. And so we'd come together and go, sorry, we didn't mean it. <laughs> and so then she'd come back and she'd go, you didn't mean it. Now come back and hug each other. <laughs> so we'd go to each other and go, sorry. And she said, you didn't really mean it. Come back and give each other a kiss on the cheek. And she was trying to teach us that we really needed to love each other enough that we would truly forgive and that we would truly ask for forgiveness. So Jesus tells us to do this great thing, and that is to keep on forgiving, forgiving, forgiving. Giving. How often can you do that? And that's when the disciples went, oh man, I'm in trouble because I don't know if I can forgive that way over and over and over again. I don't know if I can forgive that way. And so they said, Jesus, increase our faith. That's why they came to him. Increase our faith. We thought we were faithful. We might go around and do some good stuff and go, well done, good and faithful servant. We don't even wait for Jesus. We go, oh, I did good. I did good. Good for me. I feel good about what I did. Good for me. It is 
that kind of attitude that Jesus was trying to correct and that the disciples recognized that they needed more teaching in order to have really great faith. To which Jesus said, you only need a little bit. But you have to use what you have. There's a story about this shoe salesman who was sent into this very remote uh, county. And the people there were country, country. And he went out there and he sent a message back to the company and he said, these people don't wear shoes. I'm coming home. And so they sent another salesperson out there. And the second salesperson went out there and said, sent back a report and said, these people don't wear shoes. Send me more order forms. <laughs> and so they recognized an opportunity to do great things. And that's what Jesus tells us. Instead of looking at what you don't have, we've been talking about that a little bit with stewardship, haven't we? And our giving. Instead of looking at what you don't have, look at what you do have and use it. And then Jesus uses that little parable again, where he tells about the master who comes in and his servant comes in after working in the field, and the master does not say to the servant, oh, come on, pull up a chair, put up your feet for a little while. The master still expects to be served by the servant, doesn't he? And the servant does it without complaining because he knows that's his job. Well, guess what your job is? Your job is to have faith and to use it, even if you only feel like you have a little. Remember what a great thing can come out of just a little teeny bit of faith. Today we celebrate the faith of our <coughs> brothers and sisters around the world, and I can't help but remember the celebration that I told you about when we came back from Africa. The Sunday when um, the church in Mozambique was having Thanksgiving Sunday. And they were all bringing their gifts. Those people were not rich. Many of them still live with dirt floors and little thatched huts. We got to peek into one of those. Um, they literally, I mean, they literally have dirt floors. We're not kidding when we say dirt floors. And their huts are made out of um, just banana leaves or any kind of... Um, thatching material they can find. And most of the roofs are made out of banana leaves because they can lay them on top of one another to knock the rain off. There's enough room inside of most of these huts, which are maybe a little bit smaller than the size of this little area right in front of the chancel. So there's enough room for a, a teeny bed on this side and a teeny bed on this side with a table in the middle. And underneath the table there would be cooking utensils because it has to be their kitchen, their bathroom, their living room, their bedroom. It's their whole house. So many of these people who were being asked to bring gifts of thanks to the church did not have very much. But they gave very, very generously. Coconut lettuce, cabbages. One lady came in dancing down the aisle with a duck on her head. It was her offering to the church. Eggs, cassava, whatever they had, an occasional actual coin. They came and they brought it. Today, we come together with those brothers and sisters and with many around the world whose culture we will never know and whose lives we will never understand. But we come together because they too are children of Christ Jesus. They too are our brothers and sisters in the faith. And so as we prepare to come to the table, we celebrate by having breads from different places, Russian black bread, challah bread, uh, tortillas, pita bread, representing the people of the world. Today we come um, gathered in the cross. This cross itself was made for a mission celebration in our conference. It's made out of <coughs> bacote wood and ash wood and zebra wood. That year there was a mission celebration of the three countries that we were in covenant relationship with. Russia, where the ash wood came from. Brazil, where the bacote wood came from. 
um, a, um, did I say Africa? Zebra wood, where the, the African wood came from. Um, all of those gathered together symbolically in the cross of Christ Jesus. And also we have the fabrics from many different countries, from Africa, and Thailand, and India, and Russia. I forget where the green one came from, Maria. Kenya. Kenya. And so representing the many nations of the world coming together, not because we speak the same language, not because we understand the same culture, not because we're educated the same or live the same, but because we are one in Christ Jesus. So now let us prepare our hearts to come together and to celebrate the faith that we share with those around the world. Little or big, however you consider your faith, you are faithful when you use whatever you have to glorify God. Let us pray. Holy God, we do thank you and praise you for the chance to gather around table with our brothers and sisters, both those gathered here in this very room and those who we will never know and we may never see until your kingdom is revealed in completion. And so we thank you, God, that in Christ Jesus we are one and we celebrate the gift of the body and the blood of Jesus broken and shared. Bless us now as we come together to celebrate that great gift. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you join me in our communion hymn, Let Us Be Bread? And you will sing the refrain. We've done this before. And um, then it has verses, and I will sing. Will you stand as we sing together? Let us be bread.
And so we gather today at this table, surrounded by the saints of old, gathering with the faithful of today, sharing in the blood, in the body, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. On the night that Jesus met with his disciples in the upper room, they were there to celebrate a feast that they were familiar with, one that they had grown up with, one that told the story of their faith and their heritage, their ancestry in God. And they met there to celebrate that old familiar feast, and Jesus took that which was familiar, that which was ordinary in their midst and made it extraordinary. When he took bread and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Eat from this, all of you. This is my body which is broken for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do it in remembrance of me. We also celebrate and remember that that same night, Jesus took wine, and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Holy God, pour out upon us your spirit. And upon these gifts of bread and wine, pour out your spirit. Bless them that they might truly be for us the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, broken and poured out for our redemption. We give thanks for what Christ has done for us. And we gather with those from many places, many times, at this table of forgiveness. And we give thanks, O oh God. Knowing that we are not worthy to come to this table, we confess our sins before you. And we come with truly repentant hearts. And we ask for your forgiveness. Forgiveness for what we have done. And forgiveness for what we have not done in your name. Let our hearts be truly repentant. Forgive us, we pray. And we celebrate that in the name of Jesus Christ, you have given us forgiveness, and we celebrate that today. God, we also remember those in our church, in our world, in our community who are in need. Especially, we lift up these um, as we hold them in our prayers. Nita Manning, who's in rehab following brain injury. Becky Dixon, who's having chemo treatments for breast cancer. Zach Wells and his family, who started chemo and bone marrow transplant. He's having a hard time. Bless that family, Lord. Hear our prayers for others, God, as we gather and lift them up to you. Hear our prayers, O Lord. I've been paying Chrissy's. Jerry Wills. Robert Moody Jr. Shirley and Teensy, Gary and Sharon. Friends and family of Steve Howell. The unsaved. serving in the armed forces. <clears throat> Ernest Wise. The Christians being persecuted across the world. Bob Bellow. <coughs> Families 
that are suffering from broken relationships. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. And we pray also for our church, God. And we thank you for the privilege of serving you together. And we pray for our country, God. And we pray that you will restore this country and this world to what you desire for it to be. Thank you, gracious God, for all these things. We love you. We pray to you. We give you honor and glory and praise. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died in our stead and who lives again in victory. Thank you, God. Bless us now as we sing this prayer that you taught us. We give thanks over the bread and we celebrate with brothers and sisters throughout this world, giving thanks to Christ Jesus for his body broken for us. We give thanks for the cup, the blood poured out for our sakes. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the table has been prepared. Let us prepare to celebrate the feast.